Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Welcome from Fairview High School in Boulder, Colorado. My name is Grace Mills and I'm Fairview Student Body President. On behalf of Fairview, we are so excited to have the opportunity to speak with NASA and members of the International Space Station. We appreciate your time. Without further ado, here are our questions. Hi, I'm Sadie Korngold and my question is, what did it feel like to see Earth for the first time from space? Hi, Sadie. Well, first of all, we're super excited to be here today and get to uh, talk to all of you at Fairview. Uh, go Knights. Um, so if, what was it like to see the Earth for the first time? And the, the Earth is just absolutely gorgeous. It is um, even more beautiful and even bigger um, than I could have expected. And every day we just uh, find new marvels and new, new fun um, and beautiful things to see on the surface of the, of the Earth. Are there any environmental effects of climate change that are visible from the International Space Station? If so, which are the most obvious? Yeah, great question. Actually, there are some things that are quite obvious to see, and you can even notice a difference from your previous flight to your next flight, like the extension of glaciers or the um, extension of lakes. And then certainly a lot of uh, phenomena like uh, droughts and uh, wildfires that we associate with uh, uh, global warming are definitely visible from up here. Hi, my name is Maya Stover, and my question is, what are some challenges you face daily at the space station? Hi, Maya. Um, yes, yeah, so one of the challenges that we, we face is certainly just being away from Earth. Of course, that is um, one of the coolest parts of what we get to do as well. Uh, but it does mean we are, are away from our family and friends and, most importantly, our favorite foods as well. So we, we definitely miss that, but we're super excited to be here. Do you recall what exactly was going through your head during the moment of takeoff? Yeah, launch was absolutely amazing, um, especially for me. This is my first time uh, flying into space. Samantha here um, has, has flown more than once. Uh, but for, for me especially, it was just kind of this whole culmination of all of our training and um, kind of this, this dream that's, that I've had for a long time. So um, we were really kind of focused on the operational moment and, and making sure that we you know have, have everything in line and, and the vehicle is performing the way that it's supposed to, but there's also just just this overwhelming joy and excitement. My question is, was there any experience or something you learned in high school that you found helpful while in space or on the International Space Station? Yeah, you know, it feels sometimes like uh, being in high school because it's, it's kind of like in, in high school, it, it might not feel that way uh, always when you are in that uh, part of your life, but it's a really exciting time because you get to learn so many things and do so many things, you know, from sports to uh, math and English and science. Uh, and so up here is the same thing. Every single day we get to do so many diverse things and we have to be able to like learn and master them as much as possible. As a person of color, it would be great to know what is the biggest issue that you face because of your race and how have you overcome it? Great question, Gabriel. 
Um, you know, certainly I think we, we all have had our, our challenges and um, things that we've had to overcome to get to this point. Um, I think for me, um, the things that have enabled me to make it through those, those harder times and overcome those obstacles has been finding mentors and friends um, and support networks that have helped encourage me along the path uh, to pursue the things that I was interested in and find opportunities um, that helped me pursue my dreams. So I would encourage you and anyone else to do the same. I was wondering, how does working on a team in a confined space and with people from different countries and cultures affect your work and change your appreciation for the discoveries that you are making? Well, my colleague here, Samantha Cristoforetti, is the perfect question, perfect person to answer this question. Uh, she is an ESA astronaut, European Space Agency, from um, Italy. Yes, indeed. I think it adds to the fun and the depth of the experience of being up here. When sometimes, uh, you know, we we get to share um, aspects of our culture. You know, Wadi and uh, my other American crewmates explain to me parts of American culture that I'm still not familiar with. Uh, you know, and and sometimes I share parts of you know my own European and specifically Italian culture. And then we also have Russian crewmates who bring in all this whole, um, you know, very rich um, and and in some ways different. Uh, culture from from their home country and that just makes the experience so much richer and more interesting uh, my question is have the contents of your dreams changed in space it's an interesting question I I don't think I have really experienced dreams, or at least I haven't woken up and, and um, remembered any dreams that I've had. I've actually slept very well in space. Um, we have nice, super comfortable sleeping bags um, that we sleep in in our crew quarters. And inside your sleeping bag, I like to just kind of curl up and just float. And it's uh, super, super comfortable and super easy to, to get, some, get some Zs up here. How many spacewalks have you been on and have you ever had a problem while on a spacewalk? Yeah, so far, actually, neither one of us has been out on a spacewalk. We have both uh, trained for uh, spacewalks and uh, for this specific flight, um, Wadi is, uh, you know, if, if the necessity arises, would be ready to go out uh, anytime in uh, the NASA suit, the EMU. And uh, for this flight, me specifically, I am trained on the Russian um, spacewalking suit. So maybe, who knows, in a few months from now, we will be able to answer your question. <laughs> what are some obstacles you face in a heavily male dominated field? You know, I think your generation um, of, of younger younger women and um, young girls is actually experiencing um, kind of the 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 goal in this in some senses. I think the um, you all have um, opportunities, and I think that there are um, more women and and girls getting involved in STEM and and following their dreams. Um, and I think that's really important. My name is Rachel Brennan, and what is the most fun thing about being in a zero gravity space? Totally floating, of course. Here, we'll uh, give you a demonstration. I'll be right back. I hope that looks fun because it's really, really a lot of fun. <laughs> um, my question is, have you always known you wanted to be an astronaut? And if not, what inspired you? So for me, um, I have um, wanted to be an astronaut for a pretty long time. Um, I was pretty young, even, even younger than um, in high school when I first um, 
first vocalized that I, I was interested in, in this career. Um, I certainly never really thought that it would actually happen, but um, kind of just putting one foot in front of the other, just uh, super lucky to be here. What is the coolest thing on Earth that you have seen from space? So for me, um, I am a geologist, so I spent most of my career uh, looking at rocks um, on the ground. So it is super exciting for me to be able to now have the opportunity to look at rocks from space. Uh, so I have just really loved so far being able to look out and see all of the different landscapes as we pass over different parts of the world, getting to see mountains and canyons um, and oceans is just absolutely gorgeous. How long did you guys have to train before going into space? So when you become an astronaut, because astronauts come from, from different walks of life, but nobody is specifically trained, like, you know, out of college to be an astronaut, we get what's called basic training, which can be between a year and a half, is in my case, I think for what it was more like a couple of years, um, where you learn the basics. Uh, and then when you get assigned to a space flight, then you start your assigned training, where you're specifically training for that mission. And again, that can vary depending, you know, of, you know when you get assigned and what role you're going to have. But it can be anywhere between a year to a couple of years. Um, my question is, have you ever had to deal with people saying that you were dreaming too high? Um, and if you have, how did you respond and not lose hope? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that I ever had anybody kind of explicitly say um, that type of thing to me, but certainly I am sure that, that people thought it uh, when I said that I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, but I think, you know, no matter what it is that you want to pursue, whatever you're interested in, um, I think the, the way to kind of keep chipping away at it is to just find opportunities to get involved. Um, find internships or um, opportunities that will just allow you to get hands on and just continue to uh, pursue this thing that you love. And eventually all of those pieces will come together. Hi, I'm Will Olson. And my question is, what do you do for entertainment up on the space station? Uh, we hang out a lot as a, as a crew, uh, so we, we like to uh, eat uh, all together at least a couple of times uh, per week. And uh, once a week, more or less, we, we watch a movie all together. So uh, that's mostly what we do as a crew. And then each one of us, of course, also likes to, you know, give a call home, uh, you know, talk, talk to uh, our families, uh, and certainly watching uh, the earth flowing beneath us from the window. I am Lauren Pat Wardhan. Um, you both are an inspiration to women everywhere. And as one of those young women, I was curious what advice you have for women who are interested in astronautics. Yeah, I, I think that it's no different than uh, any other uh, um, interest, if you're interested in something, uh, and uh, that something is a good thing, and astronautics certainly is, uh, then you should go for it and pursue it. And uh, I don't think that there are um, any um, um, particular barriers necessarily to overcome as long as you, uh, you know, work hard and, and pursue this with, uh, with, with passion and, and, you know, it, it's really what, uh, what inspires you every day to give the best that you can. I was wondering what you would want people on Earth to gain most from your experiences as an astronaut. Well, I think there's a lot that uh, people can gain from the the this whole thing of human spaceflight that we get to, we have the honor of participating in. I think one of the um, really important pieces um, is this international kind of cooperation that we've we've mentioned um, so far. This this idea of that we can 
accomplish so much more when we come together and that we can all use our strengths um, to benefit the world and to benefit the earth. Um, I think that that sentiment and that notion is something that we can apply to lots of different um, arenas on earth and I think is a really, really important one. Hello, my name is Zach Young, and my question is, is there a big risk of things like space junk hitting the space station and doing damage to it? Yeah, that's, um, that's an interesting point you bring up. There is indeed such a, such a risk. Uh, however, it's a risk that is uh, very much under control because, you know, there, there are um, assets, there's a network of um, uh, observation uh, instruments that are able to monitor the orbit in which space station flies and if there is ever a even a remote chance that a piece of debris that is monitored and tracked uh, will hit space station we move space station out of the way <laughs> um, and in the case of smaller debris that are not you know visible from the ground that cannot be tracked um, all of our modules have micrometeorite protection shields that hopefully will catch them before they are able to fly through the space station and create a hole and a leak what would your suggestions be for youth uh, that are aspiring to be astronauts or go into fields pertaining to astronomy? So my first piece of advice would be to listen to all of your teachers at Fairview. Uh, they're, they're all great and all brilliant. Um, and I would also just say find the, the field or the thing of interest that is, is really the most interesting to you. Uh, make sure that it's something that you just love. It gets you out of bed in the morning. Um, it's not something that you do because you, you think you have to or your parents, parents tell you you have to. Um, really something that you enjoy. And if you can find that thing and, and do that for a job, um, you'll be happy every day of your life and, and, uh, and truly fulfilled. Hi, my name is Emmy Crosdale, and my question is, what is daily life like on the space station? So we start about 7.30 in the morning, and we have like a meeting, except that this meeting happens on space to ground uh, radio. So we talk to Mission Control Houston, and then to Huntsville, who is responsible for our NASA science. And then we cross over the Atlantic, and we go over and talk to Munich in Germany, who is responsible for the European uh, systems and science, and then all the way to Tsukuba in Japan. Uh, where they are responsible for the Japanese module, which is, by the way, where we are right uh, at this moment. Uh, and then our Russian uh, cosmonaut colleagues talk to Moscow. And then everybody goes off to their tasks assigned for that day. It can be science, it can be maintenance, it can be talking to you guys at Fairview. Um, uh, you know, it can be stowage, cargo, uh, sometimes really not very glamorous things, like, uh, you know, what he has spent uh, the weekend fixing the toilet. <laughs> but it's fixed. Yes. It's fixed now. It's fixed. So I would like to thank Fairview, not only for giving us a stellar crewmate, but also for giving us a fantastic space plumber. Thank you. Hello, my name is Natalie Puget, and I'm in the 11th grade here at Fairview. On behalf of all of us, I'd like to say thank you so much for your time. Thank you for answering our questions and teaching us so much about what you do. Thank you all so much for your time. It was so great being able to talk to all of you today. Hope you have a, a great week and a great summer coming up. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.